know for a specific client that's having an issue with chat forms when using Divi. Um, let me just check that I am actually live before I start talking to myself for no reason. Just making sure I have actual sound. Give me a second here to open my video. Yeah. I should so be I able to hear myself. Sound. Good. Here. To open so I will video. keep the live yeah. going and I'll just. I should so be I able to hear myself. Sound. Good. Here. Sorry, so guys, if you hear crying, but. Keep the live going and I'll just. I, I am in a house, so it happens. Ignore the crying baby. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it right now. But because I have to continue working, I have to do this video either way. Um, and this is a solution for the client, so I, because I know him, I don't think he'll care that the baby's crying in the background. So if you don't like the video, then just skip it. So let me try and show the issue here. So let me find the other URL first. I think I'm sharing this. Okay, so let me share my entire screen just because I'm gonna be switching tabs. So let me reshare my screen then. Uh, I was sharing a window, but it's not gonna help. So let me share my entire screen. That should be better. Okay. Mm making sure the screen is back to sharing uh, it should in theory yeah it's back so this is where I fixed the issue so the form is working on this URL now um, but I'll show you another URL that has the same issue and what the actual problem was now presumably these forms were working before I inherited this website from another developer who I don't know so I'm working with what I've got um, first note is that I'm gonna do edit with visual builder like we always do with Divi to see what's going on I already know the solution to the problem because I fixed it on the other end but let me just um, explain what's going on just give it a second to load um, if I actually click the button which I didn't fantastic so just give it a second to load now that I've actually clicked okay um, here goes nothing so I I like the the visual builder here I use the front end builder I don't usually need to go to the back end but for this I'm gonna do that because it helps me um, see where the guy is into the code so the only thing he has is a text module and he's got the text in there so uh, and whatever he wrote that's fine I'm okay with that so what I did notice when I went to the text section here is the code that he was telling me about that he has jot forms going so this is JavaScript as you can tell if you've ever coded before this is JavaScript now my first thought is it may or may not work in a text module um, it probably would and there's probably caching issues related to why this isn't working right now but I would prefer to have this as a separate code module just so that I know that this is coded so nothing to do with actual text that he's written on the on the website so let's just use a code module instead of a text module so that I know that it's actually executed because I want this code to execute it probably would have worked in the text module as well, as well but for for my sanity I'll just put it in code module so I know what's what's what so that's the first thing I need to do and I'll save the other thing um, people need to think about is when you use caching, like whether it's SiteGround in this case or anything else, you can notice that I've got WP Rocket um, going. So I have to be careful about uh, what I'm caching. Because this um, form is loaded externally from JotForms using JavaScript, I have to actually disable caching on this page because the form won't load because it's not loading any external JavaScript or it's deferring as we say. So let me just, let me just um, do, uh, what is it? Is it, 
I want to say uh, I can do it in the visual bullet, can't I? No, I can't. I should be doing edit page, should I? Yeah. Should be doing edit page. Yeah, sorry about that. So I'm just going to say edit page. And because there's nothing heavy on this page, I can disable caching because it's not going to affect anything because it's just text and one form from Jot Forms. So as you can see, it says that it's got lazy load activated. It's got minify CSS and remove unused CSS, which are my default settings. Minify JS combine, which may be causing issues. And obviously the one that I think is causing issues is deferred JS. In this case, the only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to untick these, right? Because I don't really want it to fiddle with JavaScript because it's external. I don't want it to defer it because I don't know if it will ever load if I defer it. So now that I've def um, unticked everything and I said disable caching on this page because it's not really required, when I do update, the form will all of a sudden work. You'll see in a second that it actually does work. Now, because um, the JavaScript isn't local, so it's not part of Divi or it's not part of a plugin that I've got installed on the site, but instead it's external. Um, and because you can't decide whether or not you should be deferring external JavaScript, or at least you shouldn't be deferring external JavaScript or combining anything that will fiddle with the actual execution of that script, it will now you'll now see that the form is up and running and that it is working for the client now so this is his form that he needs to send to whoever for this specific page so that's how you solve um the issue of jot form not um working it has to do with obviously the cache plugin wp rocket and the fact that you shouldn't be deferring javascript when it's not your javascript to defer that makes sense and also, it's preferable to use a code module when running codes instead of a text module because sometimes um, sometimes WordPress will or, or Divi will uh, assume that it's not being executed because there's an error in that code or something random like that. So I, from preference, I would use a, a code module for this. And it's, it's just on the bottom of the guy's text, so it doesn't really change anything. That makes sense just by adding a code module and actually making sure that the scripts are deferred and running and stuff. So everything should work fine out for the client. That was that short video, but just to explain the difference between sometimes like the text and the code module, use the code module. If you expect the code to be executed, it's a better choice for short codes. You can use the code module, but you don't have to because by default WordPress um, can run uh, short codes within text modules. But again, because I'm George, I just enjoy um, using the code module when it's code related stuff also, so that I know that I'm running code at that point and it's not just text from a user, right? So of course, always remember that your caching plugin does have effects on your website and depending whether you're loading external scripts or not, you should be careful about deferring JavaScript or combining CSS or JS. Um, for this, I could have went through every setting and just tested whether it would work or not, but I don't really require caching on this page, so I don't mind if it's not cached at all because it's like simple text, five lines of text, one pick, one title, and then the form. So I'm not too bothered about it being cached or not because it will load fast either way based off of preloading for, for WP Rocket. So all good, simple video, but... Hopefully, it will help people that don't distinguish between the text module and the code module. Sometimes the code module is better when you expect to execute code. That's about it for today. If you guys want me to make specific videos, and shout out to the actual client, Shalala Productions. Um, they do video production and um, for anything, whether it's uh, testimonials, ads for your website. You guys can go on their services and check. I'm, I'm not going to um, explain any of the stuff that they do. You guys can run through the site and check what they do. You can reach out to my friend Robert, who's 
the owner of Shalal Productions, and um, he can probably sort you out. Um, they are US based, but I'm assuming they take on work from anywhere if they can remotely. If not, then maybe he's not for you, but um, shout out to them. They do cool production stuff, so take a look. Follow them on the socials if you feel um, adventurous and uh, see what they do and, and check out what they do as a company. Um, they do some cool production stuff for loads of people, including their own clients, and um, they're hired by other people as well as the production company for other things. So um, check them out and enjoy your day. If you want specific videos on Divi, feel free to email me or go to my website and, and contact me via the contact form. Um, if you want specific Divi videos, but this one's for a specific client and a specific use case and issue that they were having. But uh, it was a nice opportunity to explain the difference between the text and the code module and remind people that caching on your website uh, you have to be careful with um, because you have to know what what code is running and what should be deferred and delayed and whatever. So be careful with that. Um, this issue is now considered solved and see you guys in the next one, I guess.